and it was a natural fall uh, here, perfectly uh, designed for a power station, and a man called Mr. F.E.T. Kissel was the man in charge at that point, and he and another man called Archie Blackmore uh, very quickly decided that, that if they were going to have 35 or 40 workers in the village up here, that they'd have to start planting trees because the, he discovered, of course, that the, the Tanifa in the Rakaia Gorge, which, which is a, a Maori name for everything that's nasty coming down the gorge, and uh, the, the, which is the winds and dust and shingle and, uh, coming down and hitting the houses and everything else. They had to get trees up fast. They, they actually ordered 28,000 trees, Pinus radiata or Pinus and Cygnus as they were called in those days. And then in 1930, two or three, Mr. H.E.M. Hart took over uh, as a superintendent. Now, he'd come from California, and he knew all about fir trees and everything else of that nature over there, and was very, very pleased to come here, and he recognised that the rainfall was about right, and so he would start an experimental plot, which is the old arboretum, 1.8 hectares up the hill, we proceeded to plant them in groups of three, 15, 20 yards apart, or something like that. And then uh, those trees were, were measured every year by children in the village who get them to climb to the top of the tree once they got a, and measure the height of the tree and give a, a notice of the girth and everything else. So every year, or every 70 years, he would uh, analyse the trees and how they're growing. And, and to this day, we've got his notes, which are very, very good. The walking tracks are colour coded and uh, the trees are progressively getting numbered and they're recorded on paper so people can pick up a brochure out of the holder near the gate and locate a particular tree they might have great interest in and follow the colour track and the numbers and find that tree. And Tony Barlow and Dean Norton, two people that own the Coleridge Lodge, have done a, a terrific amount of work in that line, and they've actually put put all these these three different uh, tracks go through the trees, and you, it should be self-explanatory uh, to use it. In the past, it's been very hard to say. Looking up at a big uh, over a hundred foot tree, you you try and look and see what what the tree is from down below. You're trying to look at its cones and its needles, and it's all very hard. But it'd be, it's a lot easier if you saw a notice at the bottom. People comment about the branches left on them, whether they're alive or dead, and uh, they're not pruned up like a nice, neat timber growing plantation. The specific purpose of the planting was to see what the different species grew like. After a period of time when they mature, what shape or form have they got, and maybe there is some uh, potential commercial values there. But that doesn't mean pruning them up the word go. They're there to grow and show us what they can do. And very largely that, ha that has been the case. A small number were mistakenly pruned at one time by uh, a group of students from the School of Forestry, I understand, but uh, fortunately that only happened on one brief occasion and the bulk of them are there doing their own thing. One of our members uh, <coughs> Uh, now deceased, but uh, probably at that time in his 80s, and uh, he was uh, an avid grower of trees. He had a huge collection around his farm a few miles down country from here, and uh, he was one to climb the trees to whatever height was required to collect the seed. And there he was, 80 something plus, and lamenting loudly that the people had pruned the lower branches off these trees and he could no longer climb them. <laughs> And guess who had to go up? <laughs> Graham. <laughs> I don't know how you got up, but he did. Oh, well, some of them you need a ladder to start with now. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the original arboretum go from a, a state of, I'd have to say, somewhat neglect into its present state where it's rapidly becoming better and better looked after, um, partly by local residents, which is very um, encouraging for us because those of us who have to come some distance, of course, it's, it's quite a, a, a big task to take on. But uh, the, the maintenance of the tracks 
and keeping unsafe branches off and that sort of thing. It's an ongoing problem that has to be done if it's going to be available for the public, which is what we want to see. And uh, we also have quite a bit of assistance in that line now by uh, a company which trains arborists, is that correct? Yeah. And they come with a group of uh, eager young guys once a year, Easy. hopefully, and they climb these trees with all the ropes and, and equipment and take down dangerous limbs, and, and that's really filling a, a much needed gap. So I think the act of uh, planting the Wallamai pine today is a very extremely rare specimen, and we have others uh, likewise rare, but not quite so much as that one, but uh, they are being put in there for tree-minded people to come and have a look and maybe one day take a cone or two home and get some seed and uh, just keep the whole project yeah. running a and spreading. It's a source of stock throughout the country. They're a standing museum of the original trees and the big thing is that all the nurseries around New Zealand and other private people can get seed from these different species and say, well, that's exactly what we want. Let's grow some of these in our back garden or shelter belts and so on. And they were originally planted for shelter and shade and that's exactly what those trees are. We do have a, a secret area up here. The weather's usually sunnier than further down country. Uh, it gets an equable rainfall of around about um, good 60 inches of rain, whatever that is in millimetres and the trees love the area. Anyway, it needs to be realised that when all, when all the trees down between, uh, let's say, Hororata and Christchurch have been removed for dairy farming, people will come, want to come up here for some nice shade and, and, uh, and stroke a tree, I hope.